Hello, my name is Andrew Perkins, and I'm going to be doing a few uh, video tutorials using Cake PHP. I'm choosing to do these tutorials uh, by making a blog application. I chose to do the blog application because the blog video tutorial on the Cake PHP website doesn't seem to work for me. It just doesn't load up, so I thought I could make my own, and that might help a few people out. I also chose to do these on CakePHP because I think a lot of people are intimidated by CakePHP when they're first choosing a framework. Uh, the conventions and restrictions that it places on your file names and table names can be daunting at first, and I think once you understand those you'll actually learn to appreciate them. Uh, so the first thing to do is to go to cakephp.org and download the framework. I'm using the 1.3 release, but there is a newer one, which is 1.31. Uh, just download the newest version, and when you do download that, you'll end up with several folders and a couple files. You'll want to copy and paste all of this. Uh, you don't you don't need the git ignore or the readme, so just copy and paste the rest of it into your web root on your local host or wherever you do your uh, development. I use WAMP, so my Webroot is under www, and I made a directory for this called tutblog, and I pasted those in there. The next thing you can do is go to your browser, go to localhost, tutblog, and hit enter. There we go, cakephp is up and running. The first thing we need to do is change our database configuration file and connect it to our database. If you look, I have already made a database called tutblog for this tutorial. So if you open up uh, those files into your text editor, under app, under config, you'll see a database.php.default file. You'll want to rename that and remove the .default. And then open up database.php. And in here you can set your database information. I will be using localhost, so my login is root, my password is root, and that database name is tut blog. Save that, close it out, go back to your browser and refresh the page. There we go, you can see CakePHP is now able to connect to the database and it is finding our database configuration file. The next thing we need to do is to change the salt and cipher seed. The salt is used for hashing and the cipher seed is used for encrypting and decrypting strings. Uh, these are random alphanumeric characters random alphanumeric characters for the salt and the cipher seed is just uh, random digits. You can find these in app under config inside of the core file and if you scroll down you'll find the security salt and the cipher seed. What I like to do to get the uh, random alphanumeric strings for the security salt is just go to Google type in random strings and you'll see a website here called GRC Ultra High Security Password Generator. Click on that. And this page will load a random alphanumeric string for you. So you can just copy that whole thing, go back to your text editor, and paste it in. And for the random numeric string, I just type in a whole bunch of random ones. Probably want to do something better than that, but for this demonstration, that works fine. Save it, close it out, go back to your browser, and refresh the page. There we go, CakePHP is installed and everything is working. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to set up our first table. Tables in CakePHP do have a convention for making them. Uh, you create your tables using the plural word of the word. So if we want a post table, we'll actually want to name that posts. And that's all there is to it. Uh, we need five fields, so I'm going to set five and click go. All tables should use an ID field to keep track of the individual posts, so we create an ID field. It's an int type with a value of 11. Uh, make that a primary key, have it auto increment, and you can do unsigned if you want. I prefer to. Uh, the next field we need is a title for the title of the post. That'll be varcar and 100 length. The next field we need is for the body of the post, and that'll be a text field. And then we need two other fields called created and modified. 
these will be date time fields. Uh, Cake PHP automatically handles these for you. Each time you create a new post and it's added to the database, Cake PHP will fill in this created field for you, putting in a new timestamp. Uh, anytime you modify one of your entries in the table, it will update the modified field and put in the modified date. And you don't have to worry about any of that. Cake PHP automatically does it. So after you create all that, just click Save. And there we go, our posts table has been created. And that's all we need for now to get started on the blog application. In the next video, we'll start by going over other naming conventions for files, class names, and such.